Global settings are the options located in the file menu, but did you know that you can change them with plugins? Today I'll show you how, as well as how to make a simple plugin that switches the current CSG mode. Let's get started. The only object we'll need for this tutorial is a local script. Start by referencing the place where the setting is located. I'll call my variable setting. Now to access global settings, you need to call settings like it's a function, like so. Now you can see here that there are several different classes to choose from, and the one we want in this case is physics. I know this because if I go to the file and settings, if I look under physics, you can see disable CSG v2 is right here, and this is the property we're going to be using. Now one thing to note is that although it says physics settings here, and also on this page, we need to just type dot physics. So now let's create a function to change the setting. I'll call my function switch CSG. Now changing it is as simple as just inverting its current value, and you can do that like so. And please note that the v in this is actually lowercase, that tripped me up a bit. Now we want to notify the user that the setting has been changed. And no, unlike last tutorial, we're not going to be creating an entire interface for it. First we'll check if it's been disabled. If so, we'll let them know that they're using Classic. Or else, we want to tell them that they're using the new version. So now let's make a plugin action to make this plugin easy to use. I'll make a variable called action, and go through the motions. And in triggers, I'll detect the triggered event, and connect that to switch CSG. Now one thing we may want to do is let the user know as soon as they open Studio which version they're using. And that's as simple as copying and pasting this right into this area. And I'll change switch2 to currently using. Now let's publish this and I'll be right back. And as you can see here in the output, I'm currently using classic CSG, and I am. Now to demonstrate the advantage of being able to quickly switch between CSG modes, I have this demonstration set up here. Now in an ideal world, I would be able to drag this negated part over either of these, subtract it from this part, and be left with a small brick down on the bottom. And with classic CSG, I can. However, if I switch to the new CSG, which I did with a plugin action which I set as Control alt c you can see that when I perform the union, I've got like all this nasty, extra edgy stuff here. So you see all this and wonder, well, then what is CSG v2 good for if it just makes a mess? Well, CSG v2 is good for things like sculpting, or in cases where you don't need everything to be symmetrical or perfect, you just need something that gets the job done. It has the added benefit of almost never throwing errors, which the classic CSG is notorious for doing. So that's the advantage of using different CSG modes, and that's the advantage of accessing these settings with a plugin. Have fun exploring what you can do with these settings.